Good morning, brothers and sisters. I'm gonna give you a different view today. I'm gonna give you the Highway 52 view. So you guys can see a different scenery a little bit on my journey amidst all the uh, headlights that blur my camera. To be absent of the body is to be present with the Lord. That was one of the readings last night in our, our Bible study in 2 Corinthians 5. And it's very poignant and powerful. Because our desire is not on this earth, it's temporary. Our desire is to be with God in heaven with Jesus. And the whole promise with our belief is eternal life in Christ. That we will receive the crown of glory upon his return. All this suffering, all this frustration, headaches, sorrow, grief, trials and turmoils will all pass away. But we must endure. Paul's theme throughout the whole study we've had is conversion. But not only conversion, but an also a complete way of thinking has to be done. And it's a difference. It has to be a change of way that we think, we act, we do. How we, re how we interact with others is a witness. We must always be moving forward. We cannot stay stagnant in our sin. We can't remain the same as we were before our acceptance to Christ. Without conversion, without change, without the willingness to change, you will suffer more than you will ever as a Christian. But you will suffer as a Christian, make no mistake. The difference with Christ in our life and with Christ as the captain of the helm the suffering is worth something. We're not earning our way into heaven, so don't mistake what I say as saying I'm telling you to earn your way to heaven. Because you can't buy your way to heaven. It was a gift given to you by Jesus Christ if you choose to live for him. And accept him as your savior. But without repentance, acceptance, and conversion, which is a willingness to change. The eternal promise is null and void. There has to be evidence of conversion if you say you're saved. And that evidence of conversion is your walk. It's your testimony. It's your witness. Brothers and sisters, let us make no mistake we aren't going to be perfect. We are going to fall short. And if I sat here and told you that I don't sin, I would be a liar. If you sat there and told me you didn't sin, I'd call you a liar. Because the flesh is constantly at war over the spirit. And you will fall short. The difference is realizing you have sought sin and immediately go into a repentant mode and truly mean that you are saddened by your actions. This goes to that proverbial should have had a V8 bump on the forehead. Or as Mac Allen said, Brother Mac Allen said, the cheese slid off the cracker for a moment. Yeah. One of the best analogies I haven't heard in 30 years or better. I'm going to use it. <laughs> But this is the point I'm getting at. Why do we not grasp that we have an eternal hope and glory? That we are promised if we live for Christ.
remember, when you go through battles, when you go through trials and tribulations, there's going to be a difference in how you approach it and respond. I've noticed it, and I, and I talk about it a lot, that this peace comes over me. When I should be getting mad or madder, I should be getting angrier. And instead, this peace just comes over me. This immeasurable peace comes over me. And so I look at that and I say, thank you, Jesus. You know, it's not worth it. I'm going to walk away. 20 years ago, I probably would have went swinging and went right into their face and not stopped and acted like a spoiled millennial or a spoiled, spoiled Gen Z or for lack of a better example. God has been so good and so gracious to us that in a moment he can snap his fingers and return. And if we're caught in that sin, where are we going to be? Eternally damned to hell. There's a bump coming up and we'll hit it here in about three seconds. Two, one. Remember, to be absent of the body is to be present with the Lord. Paul was not mincing words when he said that. But he also said that we have an eternal hope of glory. That is why we desire to be absent of the body, to go away. It's because we want the end. We don't want to see this anymore. This hurts us. This pain, this strife, this toil. Yeah, this hurts. This hurts our spirit because our spirit is not home yet. There's a song called Homesick. I've shared it a ton this week. I've never been more homesick than now. This is not my home. This is the temporary stopping point. I want you guys to think about that and focus on that today. Where is your home? Where is your forever home? Who is your forever love? To be absent of the body is to be present with the Lord. And just focus on that. And focus on the eternal promise. Let us go ahead and pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you and praise you right now, O oh Lord. We do desire to be with you, O oh God. We do desire to be absent of this body and of this life. Lord, let us not forget your gifts, your death on that cross, O oh Lord. The debt that you took upon yourself that wasn't yours, O oh God. And we thank you for that, Heavenly Father. We thank you for waking us up today, O oh Lord. Lord, we ask that if there's anything amiss in our life, Lord, that you take it and change it for you, O oh God. Give us the sense to change it for your glory. Lord, give us the peace that passes all understanding. Lord, we lift up our brothers and sisters who are battling medical issues, all manners of illness. Lord, those battling the pestilences in their life, Lord. Financial strife, emotional strife. Lord, these demons are perplexing us, but you promised us in his word we're not abandoned. Those that love you are never abandoned, Lord. You say it in your holy word, and we believe that, oh God, with our whole heart. Lord, we ask you right now to just come and make your presence felt in your children today, that they wake up feeling your presence, Lord, that your anointing hands are on them. Lord, we thank you for delivering little Elvelyn from the breathing too. Your work in her, Lord, is proof of you here in our cries. Her getting off of that breathing tube, Lord, that was proof of you saying, I will. And Lord, we gratefully thank you for little Evelyn. Our other sister who just got negative tests for cancer, Lord, we thank you for that. Those that are battling chemo, Lord, we thank you for them and that you're healing them and that the doctors can't explain it. But your hand, your healing hand, Lord, is on them and we give you praise and glory. Lord, it is so hard for us to see sometimes your glory being handed down when we watch loved ones suffer. 
Lord sit by the side of those that have lost loved ones. You say in your holy word in Ecclesiastes 3, there is a time to mourn and a time for joy. Lord, there's a time to weep and a time to dance. Lord, we count it all for your glory. Lord, those that are battling breathing issues, Lord, deliver their throats right now and their nose and their sinuses, Lord, and their lungs. Give it clarity so they can get a moment to relax. Lord, we lift up Kraka. He's battling with losing his wife, Kimmy, Lord. A mother, a wife, a beloved helpmate. Lord, your will be done in Kimmy right now for Kraka. Be by his side, Lord. Be beside Sister Grace and Gina right now. Be beside Simone, Lord. Lord, be beside Kimmy and book a shoot. So many have lost loved ones. Let us be the rock standers, the gap standers for them. Let us stand in the gap that the bridge that they are trying to cross does not fall or falter. But give them strength and hope and comfort. Lord, we ask you before we close, because we do not want to grieve you, O Heavenly Father. And we don't want to grieve the Holy Spirit. But we ask you to bless our enemies. Because I know not what else to do, Lord. Hating them is the worst thing I could ever do. I'm asking you to bless our enemies. Lord, count not their sin to their charge. Count not their sin to their charge and bless them, Lord. We ask this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Love you guys. God bless you. I gotta dry my eyes. <laughs>